Halo Season 2 will feature an Arbiter, but may not be the one you're expecting. The TV series executive producer Kiki Wolfka was part of the Microsoft side of things when it comes to this TV show, talks about an Arbiter coming into the Halo show for Season 2. Specifically saying he is an Arbiter, Arbiter being the title. I've probably told you more than I was supposed to. It's possible you saw Arbiter armor. Now the semantics I think really makes a huge difference within this quote because saying an Arbiter is in the show is different than saying the Arbiter is in the show. Within the context of Halo, when you say the word Arbiter, people instantly think of Thel Vadam, the Arbiter that we know from Halo 2, 3, and beyond. But the thing that made Thel a great Arbiter is that you saw him go from a zealot, right, pushing the cause of the Covenant, seeing the truth, and then changing his ways, becoming friends with humanity and supporting you within Halo 3. That journey from foe to friend is important for the character of Thel Vadam, but will we see that within the Halo TV show? Possibly. Also, I have to say, if you guys want to stay updated with everything going on with the TV show and the game of Halo Infinite itself and what's happening beyond Infinite, well, make sure you tap subscribe and make sure you tap like if you like these kind of videos and let's get right back into those details. Because citing this game's Radar article, which is based off a different news article that came out, saying that the in the opening of Halo Season 2, Master Chief, aka Pablo Schreiber, is saved by an Arbiter from the Fanatical Covenant race. Which would be very much in line with the Arbiter that we know, Thel Vadam. The concerning thing is that this happens within the first episode. And the reason why it's concerning is because it's the first episode. There's not enough time to build up enough character arc for the Arbiter to give him the reason why they would want to save Master Chief, known as the Demon, the worst guy in the freaking universe for the Covenant, and for the Arbiter, one of the most prestigious warriors within the Covenant race, to just save Master Chief, to me it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Now we could probably reverse engineer the story, right, where Master Chief is just continually curious, why did this guy save me, and maybe we find out the backstory later on. Which in that case would be a really great way to kind of set up questions in the first episode throughout the rest of the season, like when are we going to figure out why this happened. You also have to think about it like this, we have seen other Arbiters within Halo games. Within the game Halo Wars, there was an Arbiter. That Arbiter was Reaper Morami, if I pronounce that correctly. So it could very much be this Arbiter within the TV show. Of course, this is a completely different timeline. They could just make up their own character, or they could just have an Arbiter within the show and just not even mention it. Like Aatrox was actually in season one and actually the main villain brute that you saw throughout the entirety of the series. It was just never brought up that that was Aatrox. And we actually may have already seen the Arbiter within the show here guys and some of the promotional material that's been going on around on instagram right here we can see like again like a squad of elites taking on the spartan group master chief at least has his helmet on within within this situation and take a notice of all the elite armors right there's silver with some red right mixed in with it kind of looking like maybe a little bit of a mix of reach and ce cast style but they're kind of their own way makes sense right but look at this one elite right here uh it's wearing blue and a little bit more slim down kind of thing looking a little bit different than all the other elites and i think we see this elite again you can see it's wearing like blue with a bit of gold mixed in with it of his armor set makes me think that this is a different type of elite and in fact, he's going toe to toe with Master Chief would make sense that this would be like the Arbiter within the show, right? Because a regular elite wouldn't really be showcased like this. We'd never have a one on one with Master Chief because you need to have like a formidable opponent for these kind of scenes to happen and just have it be a regular elite wouldn't really make a whole lot of sense. And you're probably thinking, okay, this is interesting somewhat, but it's the Halo show. I don't care because Halo show bad. But it seems like things are be changing this time around. We've seen with the trailers that they actually look like what a Halo show would look like. And recently we just got some information from Pablo Schreiber discussing how season two has been playing out, saying season two will be a reset and is far stronger than the previous chapter. The lead actor Pablo Schreiber says the tunnel shift just feels so much more appropriate for the franchise. It's darker, more dangerous, and all of the stunt and action sequences put you into the battle and inside the fighting. To me, it's a much more effective way to deal with the show. I think David Wiener, who is the new showrunner, is just a more gifted writer to be quite frank. I think his dialogue is better. He puts words in the mouth that feel appropriate for the character. And a big thing here, Pablo Schreiber even says within this article, they, I will stake my reputation on that. It's absolutely improved 
The art director who came on board, James Foster, is fantastic. He created a visual world that just makes a lot more sense. And the dialogue is better. It's just a better season, period. Now hearing that is rather reassuring because there is so much potential with this show to be fantastic. There is so much lore and so much to draw from to make a great Halo show. It's just a shame that the season that we got for season one just wasn't really Halo. Like in my mind, when I'm putting together a Halo show, I don't think of Master Chief having a sex scene, like ever. Talking about that, even the actor for Master Chief, Pablo Trevor, fought against that sex scene, surprisingly. Well, not surprisingly, because it was a terrible idea. Cited here saying the decision to make the connection between McKee and John a romantic connection was a huge mistake. I argued against it and fought against it, but who am I? I don't write the scripts. I only give my opinion I wasn't listened to. Clearly he was, because that was the biggest jump of the shark, ship, uh, moon, whatever you want, like, analogy you want to call it. The worst part of the show, I think, was just that entire scene. It made no sense. Being able to publicly put down decisions made by writers and staff when it comes to the writing of the show from actors lets me know that the cast and crew that they currently have when it comes to making this show understand Halo at least a little bit better and kind of gives me more reassurance that if they're willing to put that storyline down, that's not happening within season two then, because if any kind of romantic aspects was happening with Master Chief, I don't think they would be putting down the romantic aspects from season one if they're expecting it within season two. But who am I? I don't write scripts. I just chat about them. Though all my concerns from what I've been hearing from the people who make the show and from what I've been seeing from the trailers have not all been washed away, mainly because of this one thing, and that is you see this still all the time within the marketing, Master Chief with his helmet off. In a war zone, no less. And now I'm not against showing Master Chief's face at all within the show. I think it was well done, it was just rushed. But the thing is that when you just see this, it doesn't really feel much as Halo because you don't see the helmet. The helmet is so iconic. It's where you recognize people's actions and emotions from. You look at the face, right? When you try to recognize people. And when you don't see Master Chief with the helmet on, you kind of see, well, maybe just a guy within power suit armor. But it looks like Pablo Schreiber, while said some great things about season one not being that good, he also kind of doubles down about revealing Master Chief's face and he says this. One thing I learned very early on is that there's as many different opinions in the Halo universe as there are Halo fans. Uh, yeah, that's 100% true. But going in and saying, so obviously you're not going to be able to please everybody. But what I want to say is that we're tailoring an entertainment experience that is tailored to the medium that it's for. That's a very concerning, but when you play a first person shooter, the way that a character is developed is very different than what's necessary when you're making long form television. I absolutely agree with that. That's why you need to give Chief some more dialogue within the show, even though he's kind of more like the silent protagonist effectively, with especially within CE, kind of more like the Terminator, right? Right, where yeah he has dialogue but it's like one-liners straight to the point no messing around and uh what we know from season one chief definitely messed around to go on this journey with your protagonist you're not going to be able to bring an audience along in a long-form story without having access to the character's face which tells you what they're feeling how they think about everything that access to a character's emotional life over the course of time is what makes you empathize and connect with a character. Objection! You can't look at this scene from Halo 4 with Cortana's death scene and tell me you can't feel the emotion Chief is feeling within the situation. Chief is the kind of guy that stares you right down in the face with his death stare through the visor. You can't tell, but you can tell it's there. He can't even bring himself to look at Cortana within this scene. And once Cortana says something that is a realization to Chief, he looks right back at her. And then once he starts speaking to her again, he can't stand the words that he's saying. He has to look down and away. That tells you that he's shameful. He's sad. He can't understand what's really happening. And then later in this scene, when Cortana fades away into nothingness, you see the world around Mass Chief falling apart. The environmental storytelling is going beyond this. You see Chief just standing there, right? Not really doing much, but look what's happening in the scene. You can tell the emotion because he's just staring and can't believe what just happened as his world crumbles around him. That's how you do it. That's exactly how you do it. That's how you show emotion. Again, I'm not against showcasing Master Chief's face within the show. I think it could be tastefully done. I think even the first episode when they did do it, 
it made sense, but you kind of need to hold that off and leave some mystery to people so when the face reveal does happen, it's a big deal. It wasn't a big deal within the show. I don't know. I'm only a fan of the series for the past 20 years and play the games and read the books. Of course, we just have to wait until these episodes go live, which I will do episode reviews weekly on the channel here, guys. If you want to keep up to date with the Halo show and everything else happening with the games, which a lot of things are happening with Halo Infinite right now, which if you want to know what's happening with the next update for Infinite, check out this video right here. Thank you all for watching. Catch you on the next one. Peace out.